Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Anja Noro. I come from Finland, from the National Institute for Health and Welfare, and <clears throat> I'm telling you about a survey concerning the new Elderly Care Act we have had last year. In my presentation, I give you a short background of the situation before the Act, tell something about the Elderly Care Act, and tell about the data collection, main findings, and some conclusions. Before we received this Act, uh, Finland faced, as in many other countries, the population aging and the restricted funds, uh, and also the how we organize health and social care services, it, it, it is in changing in Finland. Uh, since 1970s, a preference for home-based care uh, has been uh, in Finland. And then there is lack of workforce, uh, which is facing us. Uh, for information guidance, we have used uh, these uh, quality recommendations, uh, but they, have, they, are not, they were not power, powerful enough uh, to provide change either in attitudes or in organizing services for elderly people. Hence, the new act was introduced. The act has a long name to act on supporting the functional capacity of the aging population and on social and health care services for elderly people. And it came in, in the force last year, 1st July. And the aim of the new act is ensure high standard quality on services nationwide. And it means on age population level, and that means all those people who are 63 years old or older, uh, that uh, the well-being, health, and functional capac capacity is supported, and also independent living. Uh, the purpose is also to improve the possibilities of the aging population, to participate in planning and organizing the services on on local level, and on age people uh, level using services, uh, it means uh, improving possibilities to get good quality services on adequate time uh, based on assessed individual needs, and that, that they receive services to their own home but also to increase the voice of these users, so to hear them, what they want, and increase their self-determination. And when we receive this new act, it means uh, new challenges, both for municipalities, which arrange the services for the elderly population, and uh, also for the service providers. Uh, when, the real, when the bill for the new act was uh, accepted in the parliament, uh, there was set a prerequisite for it was that it is followed, uh, how the implementing goes, and a special funding was given for the follow-up. And the purpose of the follow-up is in, in before and after study design uh, to evaluate the implementation of the new act on service organizer and service provider level, and assess can we really see change when the act came into force. And also to evaluate health and functional capacity and service needs of aging population, and evaluate costs of the implementation of the new act. And the evaluation was conduct conducted by the request of Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, by National Institute of Health and Welfare and National Supervisory Authority for Welfare and Health Care, which is responsible for the regulation of services in Finland. And in this presentation, I will tell you about the baseline results, what the situation was before the Act came into force. 
Uh, the baseline data was collected in last year, May, June, uh, and the follow-up study will be done this month. Uh, data was collected with structured questionnaires uh, using Webpropol system in Internet, and municipalities responsible for arranging services to their population uh, or municipalities or group of municipalities so there were 208, and response rate was finally 100%. Uh, the questionnaire say, was sent to civil servants responsible for elderly care services, and the questionnaire was long. There was 124 questions in it. Uh, in, in, uh, and, and we sent questionnaires to public and private providers of long-term care it, they were sent to leaders of the units, and in the question there were 43 questions. And uh, it was 24-7 hours long-term care. That means health center, hospital, old age homes, and supported sheltered housing. And there were over well, 1,800 units answered to the, this survey. And also we sent it, this to home care providers and 641 units responded. Uh, for monitoring staffing ratios, we had a one week uh, uh, follow up for the use of care time. We asked the vacancies in the unit and how much they used care time. Uh, and when we assess these uh, public and private providers, the coverage uh, of patients and clients is about 90%, and we assess that we received the units also about 90%. So 10% is still missing, and we have to have them along this year. In addition, in addition that the data from national registers and statistics were used. And when we collected all this data, we published all these results on internet, on uh, municipality and on service provider level. So everyone can go and look what they answered. And this is something it has, hasn't been done yet in Finland. Uh, and here are some results uh, of the history, how the services in Finland have been developing. And here you see age adjusted trends of long-term care services from 2001 to 2012. And uh, when there is the day institutionalization, uh, which we have been aiming at, you can see from the red line and this line here that uh, the, the institutional care has been dropping. So it's coming down about 60%. Uh, and home care, which we are aiming at, is the green line. It's zero. It's below zero, so it means that it hasn't grown as fast as hoped. Also, the support services that include meals on wheels, uh, transport services, security services, it's, it's, it's quite stable. But those services which have increased are clients being cared with the informal care fee, and supported sheltered housing beds. And in, in Finland, uh, supported sheltered housing is seen as home-based care, and uh, health center hospitals and old age are institutional care. <coughs> but when we combine uh, this 24-hour <coughs> seven care so that there are sheltered housing institutions along, it's the red line, uh, the total is coming down about 17%. So that means that uh, 
the services have not increased as fast as the population has grown. And I, I will tell you some results of the surveys. And the first one comes from the municipality survey. And in the new act, there is a task for the municipalities that they should have a written uh, planning and follow-up strategy for ensuring the well-being of AIDS population in action uh, in the beginning of this year. And that means that there are several tasks in this uh, act. They mean that they have to look health and social care services for the elderly. They have to look uh, the functional capacity of those people in their area. Uh, monitor the risk groups, uh, assess uh, housing options, transport options, cooperation with other workers and health and social care services. So it's, it's, it's a kind of strategy how they handle their aging population in their own area. Uh, in the baseline situation, 57% uh, of the municipalities already had this kind of uh, strategy in action. Uh, but it seemed that uh, it's quite a challenge uh, how they make the follow-up and how they monitor the risk populations in their own area. Uh, as I said, there were quite a few tasks set for the municipalities and tasks and uh, here is the, the, whether or not there is the municipal strategy and how many actions they say that they are covering already. And it seems that if they have a strategy, they are uh, having more, three or more actions covered. And, and more often, uh, more often uh, in big cities than in, in uh, in, in big municipalities and then small municipalities. Uh, then there was the other one, because task for the care providers uh, that uh, they should assess systematically physical, mental, social and cognitive needs of the clients with reliable measures. Um, because the old new elderly care act it's not uh, based on AIDS you can't get uh, services based on AIDS it's based on needs and now you have to ha have a good measurement for the needs and it seems that uh, uh, about third of the care providers have a, a systematic reliable measure which measures four or more dimensions of these functional capacities. And it's, it's, more, it's more often uh, in, in public services and when we look at this uh, private home care then they more seldom do these assessments. And, and if we look, if we think about the preference uh, for home-based care, then uh, it should be available also during nights. Uh, but our uh, care providers in home care, public providers said that one third do not provide nighttime home care, uh, either a week in the week or in weekends. And among private providers, it was over 60 percent. So they only gave services during days and nights. And there was a geographical differences so that. In the rural areas, there was more seldom this nighttime services available. 
And uh, if we think about those uh, clients with memory illnesses or multiple needs, they need also nighttime care to survive at home. Before the act was launched, there was a, a lot of discussion in Finland, should there be these staffing uh, ratios written in the act. And it means that uh, minimum staffing ratio should have been 0 0.4, meaning that there would, for example, be five nurses to 10 clients. It's a vacancy-based uh, measure. Uh, there was lots of discussion about that, but it was not written into act. But there is an ultimatum that if we this year find one unit with less than 0 0.5 staffing ratios, it will be written into law, but let's see how, what happens. When we looked at this baseline results, we found that uh, in, in Van uh, Ford of uh, the units had lower, lower staffing ratios than 0 0.5. So if this continues, there will be few units having this. But uh, these lower staffing ratios were, were found from this supported service housing. When we did further analysis of uh, long-term care, quality of, long, of these long-term care units, uh, and then we found that uh, the relationship between staffing levels and quality indicators were multifactorial, but no direct correlation could be found. The strongest predict predictors of quality were these uh, functional dimensions the needs of the clients. There are some practical implications from the baseline study. Uh, and it seems that the municipalities still have challenges to fulfill, for example, the strategy plans, if 40% didn't already have it. and. Uh, and all the, those who had, they weren't as good as they should have been. And uh, the municipalities need, uh, need to use uh, good assessment systems. They need to focus on care and service plans, and also the decisions are made in adequate time. The risk populations uh, should be uh, studied and uh, they should um, uh, develop early prevention and low level services, how to easily contact to services. Uh, and uh, in municipal level, when they are organizing the services, they also need to make sure that there's adequate staffing and expertise for elderly care in the municipalities. And still it's a challenge how to involve the older population uh, in the decision making. And on care provider level, uh, there are challenges also in the client need assessment systems. And uh, then uh, there was that uh, in the act that they have, uh, the care providers uh, must ask the client's views, the client's relatives' views, and staff views about the care quality, perceived care quality. So how to do that, and with, with, with which kind of methods. So this is a huge challenge. And of course, the adequate staffing is the challenge there too. Um, and the policy implications might be that, uh, well, Although the deinstitutionalization has happened, it hasn't been fast enough. And, and there is no need to develop uh, uh, services, home-based services, that make the home-based care possible. Uh, it might be that um, 
having these uh, difficult economic times, it might be that uh, the strengthening of the home care preference uh, might be ex expected and uh, to save some money. And uh, we need different kind of ways to work when we have uh, clients at home who have multiple needs. And um, based on our results, we could rec recommend not to write in the law of these uh, staffing ratios, because then we will uh, uh, stick our uh, staff in the institutions, not in the home care. And we are, when we are away facing the uh, lack of workforce, then it should be put in the home care, not in the institutions. And if we write it in the law or in the act, so then it's permanent there, permanently there. So also the staffing resources should be defined based on clients' needs for care and services. And when we are talking about this home-based care, then the mem clients with memory illnesses uh, is a big issue, and uh, it means that it's not on the, on the responsibility of, of all health and social care staff, but it, it's responsibility of, of the whole society. And when we are t talking about home-based care, it means that we are uh, caring, helping, and also rehab rehabilitating the clients at home. And those figures show that uh, already uh, a huge proportion of our Finnish clients have memory illness, uh, also among our home care clients. And uh, some decisions also has to be made uh, about this. At, uh, is there need for changing the contents of the act? Uh, uh, and when we have this uh, follow-up study, then we can assess that uh, if the implementation process is quick enough, can we see some improvements uh, in the Finnish situation? What are the obstacles? Uh, what kind of support we have to give to the municipalities and service providers that they can fulfill uh, the tasks the Act has set? and uh, also what kind of guidance is still needed and uh, also the regulation and supervision uh, which uh, these regulatory authorities uh, do how they have to change that we can develop more home-based uh, systems for Finland. Uh, here are some uh, more information data, and if you can read Finnish, there's already a book published, and it can be found from those pages. Thank you.